We're waiting on the contractors to get here. We're gonna get the daggone thing done. I'm so excited. Can wait. I'm a little bit extra this morning. Hi, how are you guys? We're doing a mobile home updates video today. I am Marina, and I am on my way to make our mobile home a mobile mansion one run at a time. We do mobile home living in a trailer park in Tennessee, and every day I work to break the stigma of trailer park living. Now that that Dollywood ride introduction is over, <laughs> let's do some updates to the house. It is bright in here during the daytime, but come nighttime, that's our only lighting paired with those and now our newly lit up shows over here but it's still not a lot of light and it still is a very dim daylight light kind of vibe in here you're talking nursing home end of life care kind of thing and i want it bright in here because nothing motivates me like at like natural daylight and the daylight light bulbs they do okay but it's not natural daylight so it is in the evenings it's very dim in here i've mentioned that several times on the channel so we're going to brighten this area up in hopes I'll be more motivated. And in hopes that I can see, because I am blind in one eye. Let's not forget that. Am I lying to myself because I want recess lights? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm just lying to myself. It probably won't motivate me any more than I'm motivated today to do anything. But it will actually help me see better because I am actually blind in my left eye. So, well, legally blind. You, I mean, same thing. You can ask me to read something with my left eye and like I don't even know where the, um, the lens is. Am I looking at y'all? So our goal is to brighten it up in here, um, not just for like on camera, like in person. On camera, it's actually brighter in here than it is in person. Um, that's because I've had to work with the exposure level and stuff. So it doesn't look like a dungeon when I'm filming. So it actually looks brighter to you guys than it does to us. So this is gonna make it look brighter in person and it's gonna help me see. And that way, if the kiddos have leftover school that they need to complete in the evenings, we're not straining. And, or if I'm writing in my to-do list, which I do daily, because <laughs> I'm always adding something to the to-do list, I'm not straining my eyes or anything like that. It's just going to be nice and bright in here. I think we got the daylight ones. I know we didn't get warm light. So we do have a lot of warm lamps in case we do want it cozy in here, because I love the feel of like a warm lamp. I, I love warm lamps, just not on video. So I've got my warm lights and my lamps and then my extra lighting like this and then daylight lights and my actual lighting, like overhead lighting. That way I can have the best of both worlds. You get the best of both worlds. Chill it out, take it slow, then you rock out the shoe. In order to get it bright in here so we can see to do everything else, we started off with the recess, kind of recess lighting. We had a contractor come in and do it because Shane wasn't confident in doing it. He isn't confident in electrical work. But the guy was actually walking us through the steps and, like, teaching Shane a lot of things. So it was really cool. And he had this cool little, like, gadget. It's like witchcraft. <laughs> I told him, I was like, that thing is so cool. I would have made a mess. Insulation would have been flying everywhere. But it was really neat to see how that they installed these. And it's really not as hard as you would think it would be. I got the ones off Amazon because Amazon's recess lights, they were a lot cheaper than Lowe's. The price difference was insane. So these, you just put a little cup in there like that. Look at me trying to tell y'all what to do when I don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> you just put a little cup in, thing like that and you have to thread the wire through. It sounds complicated, but it, it really wasn't. And might I add, Roberto here did a fine job. He did a really good job. I don't know how to feel about it. It looks so good. So good. Oh my gosh. Like, is this my house? Is this my house? Oh! <laughs> we, we ended up not putting this back up here just for now because when we were looking at these, we had toggles up here and we were gonna have, we had to leave the toggles in there. So we gotta patch up the ceiling and we were like, do we, what do we do? Because the area, we we're gonna have to make new screw holes uh, in the wood because the those are toggle holes and nothing's going in there, you know, because toggles can't come out. They're stuck up in there forever. So we decided to go with just another light right there for right now. I'm keeping this uh, for if we want to go back to this because I love the way that this look. I love the black uh, room lighting. I, this was one of my favorite things that we did to our house. But I'm not going to lie, whenever I, I asked him what it would look like if we did this, um, 
I was like, you know, I, I might want to, I might want to just do that life right now. So we have options. That's our main area that we can hang up anything at any time, a chandelier if we want to. So that very well may, may be going back there at some point. But for right now, we just have this. It was the easier route. And that gives us time to figure out how to get that back up there if we want it back up there. This ain't going nowhere though. This is staying with me. But you'll see here, this is this is where the screw went into the toggle at. She's beautiful. I love her. But for right now, we went with this. What do you think about them? I like them. You do? I love it though. It looks like a mansion. A mansion? Mm -hmm. That's a mobile mansion, baby. Yeah, it looks so comfortable. When I tell you there's so much light in here now, there's no squinting. My eyes have been giving me problems. I haven't talked to you guys a lot about it, but where I had the pseudotumor cerebri, this eye, I wasn't playing. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm crying. I ain't shed tears. It's almost is completely legally blind like I cannot see anything well I went to the eye doctor to get glasses because obviously my other glasses broke y'all saw that in the last video my other glasses broke and I'm wearing contacts right now I had trials I went to get me two pairs of glasses so that if something happened to one pair I'd have another as backup and they looked into my eyes to check out my optic nerve and this one is completely white now and this one's pale pink and I've noticed a really big decline in my vision especially in the past two years so it's a little bit concerning we couldn't have picked a better time to put these look at that it even like lights up the cotton swab up there <laughs> and we couldn't have picked a better time to add these lots in here because i really am struggling with my vision um but at least i can see and i thank god for that every day even if my vision isn't 2020 at least i can see and i thank god for that every day uh, it saves a lot of quit you can do school in here without squinting now yeah. did you know that you're so smart yeah. So now to Lowe's to get some stuff that we need to do some touch-ups in the house. Or might I just go on and say mobile mansion, baby, because that's what we're headed towards. I'm switching around my Lowe's on me. I walked in here and I felt like somebody had rearranged my house because I live here, basically. I walked in here and I was like, y'all rearranged it without my, without my permission? Permission. And they added all this over here to where paint swatches used to be. Is that the cheap ones? Yeah. We need the great value. Um, which? Which one's cheaper? No, I mean, it's walls and ceilings is what you need. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's basically walls and ceilings, too. Yeah. Well, I can see yourself. Did you get the cheap brushes? Yeah. Hey. Actually, I think this is cheap. Yeah, I must say, these are the cheaper ones. Forget that. I miss the paint and stuff over there. It don't feel like my loaves. We need two scrapers. Are you gonna get those kind of scrapers? Are those the cheap kind? <laughs> oh, here's the plastic ones. They're out. Yep, they're out. Eh? Dang, nab it. Oh, hmm. you can actually buy these things. Oh, can opener or paint opener? Paint can opener. Can opener. Can opener. Can opener. <laughs> We should get one. We always are needing something like that. Yeah, I agree. It'll probably get lost. Look, Gorilla Glue to glue Shane's mouth shut. Yeah. Something smells good down this aisle. It smells of perfumey. These are the washer and dryer set. This is the washer and dryer set that I almost got. It's like a champagne color. I got my, do I have a rat tail right now? I got my gray ones and I like my gray ones a lot. Whoa, they have like got me twisted. I'm so confused. I mean, the, I think it'd be cheaper to get just one of okay, these. Okay, that's $10 for how many? For one, but. Ounces? But it's this, this is eight. Big. And this is 32. So that's seven and that's, yeah, that's yeah, way cheaper. 16. Yeah, I don't know what in the world. bucks for 16 ounces. That's $10 for 32 ounces. Yeah. See, this stuff used to not be here, so there was never a backlight back there. Yeah, that's wild. I need to get um, just a small thing, a joint compound just for the ceiling. When we had the wooden thing with the lights on it, yeah, I had a patch job under okay. there because the the light under it had ripped. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to sand it and then put some drill on it. So we got the brushes, we got the roller, we got the filler, we got the scraper. We've learned to we come to Lowe's with lists now. <laughs> 
we need to get, we need to look over there and see if they've got puck lights and wire, uh -huh. light bulbs, and then trim. Yeah, for I gotta the figure out what light bulbs I want. And then trim for the. the that side sounds of the like a very basic. That sounds like a very basic. This is the easiest thing. we've ever. Don't say that. Before. You just jinxed. Uh, no, I've jinxed us. it for myself because I'll be back tomorrow. Shiny new toy. <gasps> Shame chalk spray paint. <gasps> Ella Rose. Ooh, that's beautiful. Yeah, Magnolia Home. That's a beautiful color. They got ripened tomato <laughs> blackboard. Rainy days. Ella Rose yarn shiplap and clear. I've seen the can chalk paint, but I ain't seen that yet. All right, I need to go over here and figure out which lot. Look. That's what I was telling you. Relaxed LED. This is what it looks like. That's what it looks like. This is... Reveal. GED's best lot. Yeah, because right now we have the hospital lots in there, but we don't want the... You don't want orange. Orange. You want that. So this, well, I think that'll do really good. So which one is that? Reveal LED. Reveal. Recommended for kitchens, bathrooms, and oh, craft areas. God, these. But we're going to put it everywhere. It's these. Reveal. Relax. Refresh. So they got this right here. That... How much are, these are $13 for two? Yeah, this is 25 They better eight. last until the day I die. You hear me? What? 25 for eight. For eight of the reveal? Yeah. Because those are the ones we usually get, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, all my extra light bulbs I'm giving to people. Like, I'm literally giving them away to people in the trailer park. <laughs> no, I'm giving them to people in the trailer park. Oh! Ooh. <gasps> I want it. Singing light bulbs? They sing. Oh! <gasps> Whoa! Bull! That's bright, ain't it? Battery backup bulbs, those are cool. So that's it. When you hold it, it's running off the battery. Whoa. That's cool. I don't understand that. That's neat. That's futuristic. How much are singing light bulbs? We're not putting singing light bulbs in the house. What well, do you I'm even hook them up to? How much are they? Well, okay, they're the streaming, Bluetooth streaming ones. Ellie. Right here? I don't see a Bluetooth. Oh, here. There. Yeah. $41 for how, one, one bulb. What if it goes out? One bulb. $41. That's a whole water bill. Yeah, it's great. I guess. These are the ones that I got right here. Those are the ones that I have underneath my shelves right now. We're looking for extra. extra um wiring because they come with really really short wires like unbelievably short wires my least favorite aisle of the whole store we just got back from lowe's it is dark pitch black outside and it is so bright in here. Oh my gosh. I love it. I'm going to start switching out. Well, I'm going to have Shane start switching out the light bulbs in here to match these. And my old light bulbs are going to the friends in the trailer park. And then I have a few left that... The wind just blew my screen door. <laughs> no in Jesus' name. I have a few that haven't been spoken for. And so unless a couple people here want just a few extra ones, then I'm going to... I'm gonna give those to Nanny because Nanny uses the daylight light bulbs. That way they're not going to waste and I feel better about giving them to other people. And we're not just switching out the light bulbs for the 50th time <laughs> and 
throwing the old light bulbs away that's crazy because there's a lot i haven't used but then there these are still good that are up in my life right now it makes me feel better knowing that they will help somebody out and save somebody a few bucks by ha not having to buy light bulbs because we saw how expensive those were in lows it's crazy once we get the light bulbs switched out then comes the meticulous job of combing through my entire living room and filling in all the little like nail gun holes and the big screw holes there's a lot of them there's a ton of them actually and then i've got two big areas in my wall where they're just completely beat up and it's going to take a lot of joint compound fix there's several ways to fix mobile home walls hold on i feel like i'm glowing she's holographic <laughs> there's several ways to fix mobile home walls i've looked them up googled it youtubed it there's a lot of ways I'm just using the joint compound way because I'm um, familiar with that way. We did that in our dining room. And while it isn't foolproof, you can still mess it up, believe it or not. Trust me, I know. <laughs> it's, it's the easiest way for me, so that's the way that we're going to do it today. We're just going to do the pink joint compound. I think that's what it is. The pink stuff that dries white. So that way we know when it's dry. Because nobody wants to sand or nobody wants to paint over wet joint compound. Ask me how I know. But look, they look so good. In part two of the living room makeover, you're seeing us fill in holes and you're seeing us working on this wall. So we built this from the ground up, what? A year and a half ago? Two years ago? About two years ago, I would say. A year and a half ago, two years ago, something like that. You must see a bone in the bottom of your screen. That's one of my chipmunks. What? Okay, you just strolling through. You strolling through, baby. This is your house. And that is when we really started, like, doing overtime on our makeovers and trying really hard to push for quality. Um, even though we don't always make quality, don't get it wrong, don't get it twisted, we still do try to do quality now. And this project right here is really what boosted that way of thinking in us. Because it turned out so well because we worked so daggone hard on it. I had only watched one person on the internet do it and that was this really smart fella who really knew what he was doing and he saved us, didn't he Shane? Yes. Like he gave, I, I linked his video in the um, description of my video whenever we, we did this project. That dude, that feller, really knows what he's doing and we kind of just followed suit and him and learned that way nobody in my sphere had done something like this so when we did this we knew it wasn't just going to be like this so we gradually went on to add these diagonal plates and these lights that you can't really see right now but y'all see them before in the video we're gonna wing it because all i have is a vision that came up in my mind when I walked through a Shoney's one day. <laughs> and I'm taking some inspiration from that vision and trying to make something of my own out of it. So She heard a voice that said, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> Field of, is that, that baseball movie, the oh. you know, Field of Dreams or whatever? <laughs> if, they, if you build it, they will come. So, we're winging it. I have the vision in my head. Let's hope that Shane can put it on paper. It's exactly what he's doing right now. And I know y'all have had some behind the scenes before, but right now y'all are gonna get another behind the scenes. This is how we kind of work out and kind of make a project baby out of my vision and Shane's vision. We create a project baby. We create a project Frankenstein. This is how our project is conceived. I'm fearfully creative. So we're gonna keep my light fixture. I'm not gonna go with any other colors, right? I don't think so. I was gonna try gold. I don't like gold. We're not gonna do that. Um, I don't like silver either. So we're gonna keep those and we're gonna move this one over. Right? Yeah. Because remember we have to have it in the center. These, both of these sides right here, because there's a vent right here, they're not even. This one's a lot smaller than this one. Sometimes you can tell on camera, sometimes you can't. And we could scoop the whole fireplace over, but we don't want to do that because then we have to mess with duct work for this vent down here and we don't want to mess with that work. So the best option is to just be build a smaller wall over here because it's going to be connected to the built-in in itself. So we're just going to build a smaller wall over here and um, do it semi-thick so we can get the same size on each side of the fireplace so we don't have to move it over and make it even. How many shelves? Because we're doing about the amount of thickness of 
Those laws no those shells on the wall. I guess the shells so one here. One here. Two. Hey, that's a really good fireplace. Nothing's gonna be on the bottom. What do you mean nothing's gonna be on the There's bottom? There's not gonna be a bottom. What's gonna be there? Nothing. You're gonna be able to see through to the wall? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. We don't want to mess with that bent right there. Oh, ten four. Okay. So how high up do you want to start your shelves? Mm, about this much. It's not gonna really count for much <laughs> airflow. There. No, like right there, like you see from right here. How many feet is that? That's not even thirty feet. Maybe that's not No, look at it against oh, the fireplace there. Oh no, you're looking at about that's about thirty feet. No, that's about a foot and a half what you're looking at. Go over there and show me. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, now that's about three feet. So uh, we are gonna have something here. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm Um, I'd say it. about But nothing here. About six inches wide. Maybe. You want it? Oh, wait. No, I mean, I'm just thinking, like, what would you need in order to Six. make a wall? How thin could you really make a wall with it still being stable? It just, it's going to rely on the, I mean, you're looking at probably about four inches, seeing that i got to put studs there. Yeah, about four inches. So you're not going to have a wall over here? No wall. It'll be straightly connected to that side of the fireplace. I am going to have to have a stud there, though. Ooh, no, you can't do that! Well, here's Are the thing. Really? Because here's the thing. For what we're doing on the front. They're going to make it even if you do that. For what we're doing on the front, though, I have to have something to attach that to. I've got nothing to attach that to. It ain't going to make it even, then. Because you'd have to do the same thing over here. So we got to find a way to figure out a way to do that. You're going to have, so you have this stud here, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to cover that stud with sheetrock. Obviously, you're going to have the sheetrock on this side that makes that wall come out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to have sheetrock covering this stud here. So it's going to be going up through here like so. Right? Yeah. Now, my theory was to lay sheetrock, we would we would also have a another beam or something going across right here. Uh -huh. And it's getting covered right. because the sheetrock is going to arch right here. Right? Right. I've mentioned it before, but this is how I keep everything in budget. I put everything into the Lowe's app or on the Lowe's website to kind of get a good idea about how much all the supplies together is going to be. Down to the trim, the caulk, nails, whatever we need, we put in the Lowe's app or on the Lowe's website to gather about how much it's going to be walking out of Lowe's because nobody wants to walk out of Lowe's spending $200 more than what they anticipated. <laughs> I also don't compile a bunch of makeovers together. So in this video, we're doing wall touch-ups and then we're doing the fireplace built-in. We'll go to Lowe's once for the wall touch-ups and then we'll go to Lowe's the second time for the fireplace built-in. The walls were horrible. <laughs> they were holy, holy. <laughs> like you can see here, we've got drill holes. We have hung so much stuff on these walls in the last almost day. I don't know how long it's been. It's been almost a decade. It's been the better part of a decade. Um, in this house and they've never been that I can remember filled in so it was difficult trying to fill these big old suckers in because some of these had anchors in them we had to try to dig the anchors and the toggles out of the wall making an even bigger hole the couch had beat up the wall in a particular area y'all have seen that before in the videos we've hung all sorts of curtains and curtain rods and it's just it was a mess. So I used the pink drying spackle. It goes on when it's wet, it's pink, but when it dries, it's white. And I like to use this because nobody wants to sand over wet spackle. Nobody. <laughs> so what I do is I take a little bit on my finger. The key to this is to not add a whole lot. The key is just to get it there in the hole and then kind of wipe it away and sand it with your finger so that it's not a bunch surrounding the hole like you just want it in the hole so i'm taking it i'm dabbing it in the hole and then i'm wiping it off with my finger so that there's not a lot of excess around the hole <laughs> When you 
stepped into my life Such a magic feeling We tore down my walls I wish I could go back To right before you told me I'd try to change it all But look at us now I could have gone so far It hurts to realize we're parted Yeah, look at us now This is who we are and I just know things will never be the same We're like strangers again, again, again Strangers again, again, again We're like strangers again, again, again I just know things will never be the same We're like strangers again Tried much harder, now all we have are scars. We said we'd get so high, higher up than heaven. We said we'd reach the stars. But look at us now, we could have gone so far. It hurts to realize we're parted. And yeah, look at us now, this is who we are. And I just know. Strangers again, again, again Like strangers again, again, again I just know things will never be the same Like strangers again Started. It's time to get my head up again You said that you had to I'll try to forget you Just didn't think we'd end up this way Like strangers again In this video, I'm just worrying about filling in the holes because I want to focus on the bigger part, which is the fireplace insert, the built-in over there. So we're just filling in the holes in this video and we'll come back and we'll paint over them. The same as I'm kind of just piecing around the living room and we're not doing everything at once. Even the fireplace, it's done, but there are some things I wanna add to it. I, I wanna add some more shelves. I wanna add um, a thing for the cords so cords aren't hanging out of the walls. So we're kind of just bouncing around in the living room to get all the things done and it's working for us. <laughs> I have since realized me and Shane usually pick what other people would deem as the inconvenient route to get stuff done, but we thrive off of that stuff. We thrive off the of chaos over here. I don't care. I really don't care. You hanging up seems a little unfair, but I don't mind receiving sometimes. We haven't talked for a couple of days. You don't
Now we get to the fun part. So the fireplace built in was something I, I, I haven't been this excited for, excited, <laughs> excited for anything in a long hot minute. I walked into a Shoney's one time and got the inspiration for this. How big is that piece of wood? This wood is supposedly when you buy it, it's eight foot right out the gate. But um, it's actually like a centimeter over. Huh. Yeah. Okay, so how wide is it? Uh, I think an inch and a half. Okay, so that's what we have to use to compensate for the 2 by 4 on the smaller side to make it even. You guys will see what I'm talking about in a minute. When we're finished. That's the straightest line I've ever seen. Yeah. So you got three of those long pieces? Yeah, so the, these two right here are going to be on the corner and right here. Uh huh. And that's what we're making that wall out of, right? Okay. Um, the third one is going to be used right here. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see it because we're going to have that arch and then you'll have the inside sheetrock that covers the arch. But it's going to be right here and that's what the sheetrock connects to right here on the arch. Do you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind now, of. obviously, the arch does that so it's, you know, you don't have to do anything with that. Okay. And then over here, the rest of the third is going to go right here for that. That will tell us on how big this wall right here will be. I'm hoping it's not going to come too far out because this it won't provides a little bit of an issue. That's I'm hoping it'll be like right on the money. That's <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I feel like we're getting out of our comfort zone with every makeover <laughs> lately, but this one was really out of our comfort zone. I wanted arches, and not just arches, like half circle arches. I wanted soft gothic arches. And so when I showed Shane just an idea of what I was wanting, he was like, uh, because I showed him a picture of actual stonework, like actual stonework gothic arches. And he's like, Marina. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 hear me out, hear me out. So we had to figure out a way to make these arches possible in a very, very small space. I knew they would be very narrow arches. I did not care. Nonetheless, I wanted these arches and Shane pulled them off. We started out building a small frame on the left side because that side is the smaller side. And then the bigger frame on the right side to even out as much as we could each side of the fireplace. And then we drywalled it. Shane knows how to work with drywall. He worked for drywall for years whenever he built single wides. So he's pretty good with drywall usually uses the nail gun to hang them up and then he'll go in and he'll use the drywall screws okay so Shane's going to teach us some geometry we had the same principle yeah. <laughs> and he Shane loved geometry and my principal uh, basically called me dumb as rocks because I hated geometry I was dumb as rocks too but geometry the the early days of geometry before you get into the, like the the uh, formulas and stuff yeah it is just drawing so of course i'm going to excel on early <laughs> geometry and this is early geometry shane is literally using a string <laughs> a compass string to make the shape that i'm wanting he's he's measuring it out how big it needs to be and how sharp i want the point which like i said i want a very soft gothic arch so he's literally measuring it out and then taking a string tied to a pin and creating the arch and it worked <laughs> He's using what I like to call rich people OSB. So it's not the kind that crumbles, but it's the kind that's still thin enough for you to easily cut. He's creating our shape on it and it doesn't have to be perfect. So he's just doing like a rough draft because drywall is going to go over top of this. This didn't have to be perfect. It could be a little flawed, but the drywall, if we hadn't have trimmed it, uh, it needed to be perfect because the drywall, if you don't, tr if you don't trim it out, it would, it would look horrible. <laughs> you guys will see it towards the end of the video. You got to trim out the drywall whenever you're doing stuff like this, or you better make your drywall seamless. We put one on the back side and one on the front side to kind of box in each side of the fireplace. And that's what we're going to put our slats on. And the slats are going to go between those two pieces. And it's what's going to hold the top of the arch underneath. It's going to hold that drywall up on the arch. I asked Instagram what I was doing. <laughs> I'm gonna be surprised if anybody gets it. 
Let me tell you the guesses on, on this Insta story. I showed my husband. He said building a boat. <laughs> he on it. He did it. He got mad million dollars. Ironing board. <laughs> At first glance, I saw a shark, but an arch is probably a better guess. A shark. Oh, I can see it. Look. You know the Jaws poster? <laughs> Hold up. <coughs> that. Don't you dare draw on that. We don't have time. Make it a I sign. Don't know what I can and can't on do. Make it a ceiling fan. Somebody said arch. You are correct. Making a mess. <laughs> you are also correct. Uh, making a Valentine's heart. That's a good. Uh, that's a that's a good one. Only the good Lord knows. <laughs> You got me stumped, but I'm sure it will be worth the wait. <laughs> I love the confidence y'all have in me. Bring it, bring it <laughs> and Shane. Dunna, what? Dunna, 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 dunna. Sir. It's a shark. So you're our ship. Two of them said making a family crest. And one of them said making a shark spin. Y'all are on the same brainwave. Only time will tell. <laughs> Making cathedral mirrors. Ooh! No! Get that out of your head right now. I will never work with plexiglass or glass again. We worked with plexiglass, what, two years, a year and a half ago? Man. Shane said never again. Man. Man. We made a whole barn door out of plexiglass, and it was a nightmare. Doing rounded arches would have probably been a lot easier, but I wanted that soft point. So that's what Shane's trying to figure out. He was trying to figure out if the point was on point <laughs> and he had to cut around it to make it the right size. I am now putting these in here and these are what's going to hold this piece up. He wedged the front and back pieces of the arches in the wall so they were not being held up by anything. And then he took a piece of wood and he drilled it to the wall and then went from the back and the front and drilled the pieces into that piece of wood to make it more stable. These were fit so snug that they they were hanging up there without even having screws in them or anything. That's how snug they were. They were the perfect cut and that's because he cut one and then he used the other one as a, he used it as a stencil on the other one so that they were the same size. He added slats to the bottom of these and connected them to each piece and that is what we hung the drywall on. And the drywall hack is super cool. So you turn it over to the back side and then you make very, very shallow slices, like even slices all the way from one side of the sheetrock to the other. You don't do it from the front because that will be a big old mess. <laughs> it will not be, you will be wasting drywall, <laughs> but you do it from the back. And you see Shane's just being very, very light handed with it and just doing very shallow cut, not even cuts, just he's etch etchy sketching it basically down through there. And then he's gonna take it and he's gonna pop it very, very lightly, like easily. You gotta be so easy with this stuff. It's so fragile. <laughs> you gotta like, pop it with your hands and that way it's not breaking from the front and it's not breaking from the back because these cuts are shallow and that's how you make it to where it's moldable so that's drywall you can't make it into an arch how it is because it's so stiff but when you do this it kind of loosens it up and it makes it to where you can literally put it on anything rounded or l-shaped whatever super cool hack he does the same thing with this drywall that he does with the other drywall. He uses the nail gun to hold it up there while he gets his drywall screws and everything. And then he uses drywall screws. That's why it's double enforced anyway. So he uses the nail gun first just to keep it in place and then goes in behind it with his drywall screws.
building a bigger frame on this side to even out both sides. So he had to do that really, really small frame on the left. And here on the right, he's doing a standard frame with two by fours. And then he's drywalling it out. This side over here is going to make sure that both the insides of the built-in is even. We've also got to move that lamp over to the left just to even everything out. This is as far as we could come over as far as this wall unless that we wanted to go in and mess with the switches because our light switch is right there to the left of the wall and we didn't want to do that. So we just brought it over as much as we could and then we're going to move the lamp over and it'll be pretty much even on each side. Got time and we're wasted Got no pens for the night I love how you look at me Feeling love, nothing to lose Can we stay here tonight? Cause I don't wanna go I know the tension's gone now And that you won't stay here Keep looking back, don't wanna forget ya Yeah, I wanna do it all again So I keep pushing rewind I've done throughout my entire house in my kitchen in my dining room in my hallway in my living room <laughs> basically everywhere we did use the brick paneling in the girls room but that's the only room in the house that we haven't done this method on the reason I do this is because a it is extremely more affordable than the brick paneling you can get at Lowe's B, I think it looks just as good as the brick paneling that you get from Lowe's. It does not look the same as the brick paneling you get from Lowe's, but I think it looks just as good. I lo absolutely love the brick in my house. So while it doesn't look similar to that kind of brick, it still looks like brick and it still looks really good, in my opinion. It's not hard. Pretty much anybody can do it. If I can do it, you can. I promise you that. And you don't have to be very uh, on point in particular with this. I just slap on some tape. has to be the thin tape, so like scotch tape, but... It's the thin. I think it is 0 0.7 inches, 55 yards of it. I get this duck, uh, what is it? Duck? Yeah, I get this duck brand, and I find this at the Walmart, along with my Apple Barrel paint, acrylic paint. The thin makes the grout lines look more realistic than the thick, because the thicker is just a little bit thicker, and the grout lines don't look as realistic because the bricks are spaced far apart. This is a little bit thinner, and the grout lines... A little bit thicker than realistic brick, but it's still thinner than the actual big scotch tape. So it looks better. You don't have to be particular with this. I slapped this sucker on there, slapped the joint compound on with my daggone hands. And then while the joint compound is wet, I take a paper towel and I take my acrylic paint. I use territorial beige in my house because I like the brown brick better than the gray brick. I don't like gray brick. I use territorial beige in the apple barrel acrylic 
paint for an area as small as I'm about to do which is just two of the sides it's only gonna probably take me about three little bottles but I did my entire kitchen with four bottles so that whole entire wall that all of my stuff is on my cabinets and everything I did that with like four bottles of territorial beige so it it goes far if you're if you're smart how you use it while the joint compound is wet i work in sections i'll get one big o section taped off i'll get a joint compound and then while the joint compound is wet i'll take a paper towel you guys will see me doing this in a few minutes if you want a more in detailed kind of tutorial i've got several videos of this on my channel we always doing this stuff around here but i'm just briefing y'all before i start while it's wet, I take my paper towel, my territorial beige, and I just dab it. I don't smear it, I just dab it. And that gives you some texture in there, and it's what really helps the bricks look like actual brick. I mean, it's as faux as like, you know, you're not gonna walk into an Arby's and say, oh, this is Cracker Barrel. I mean, but they're both eating establishments, and that's kind of the vicinity. <laughs> These are both brick, and they're just a lot different. You don't want this to dry before you peel your tape off you want to peel that tape off while it's wet it's super messy i know but you do not want to peel off this stuff off your wall when it's dry because this stuff will never come off your wall ever it'll stay there forever you pull this off you let the joint compound dry after you pull this off and then you go in with your white paint and you paint your grout lines you can also paint the entire wall beforehand but i always wait till after i do the bricks to paint my grout lines because then i can smear it and do a almost german smear type of look on my brick so i whitewash it but i don't whitewash it a whole lot to where it looks completely white i just like to whitewash it a little bit just to brighten it up Whitewashing also helps hide imperfections. <laughs> We're gonna do this stuff. Like I said, if you want a more in-depth tutorial, I've got plenty of videos in my mobile home updates playlist that covers this and I do step by step. But it is as easy as I'll get out. You can literally watch me do it now. You can watch me do it for five minutes and you'll know how to do it. That easy. If it was hard, I wouldn't be doing it. One thing that is gonna be a lot different is I've got an arch here. And if you've seen actual brick arches, the brick doesn't just bleed into the arch. There's actually a rim, kind of perimeter-like thing around arches. It can either be square or it can be a long rectangular pattern. I think for this, I've got to map out my bricks and where they're going to go, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to do the little squares because I don't have a lot of area that I'm working with. This is a very small arch. It's very narrow, so I don't want to make it look more nar narrow by using tall rectangular bricks. So I think we're going to do the small bricks as a perimeter around the arch and then we're just going to bleed our already existing bricks into this paneling and create new bricks. I'm out of reasons, I'm out of rhyme, but I'll only tell you that I'm out of time. I'm sick of love songs, I'm tired of this. I wanna tell you straight just like it is You're watching me like you want me But you're still holding back, still holding back Honestly, you're annoying me With the way that you keep playing Show me your love like it is, like it is And open my heart like you're fearless Steal all the gold you can get Like it is. 
is Bend open my heart like you're fearless Steal all the gold you can get, you can get Show me your love and leave me breathless, breathless This feeling, feeling haven't felt for so long Took a hold of me and won't let go I've been sleeping, caught me off my guard Cause you're in my space and now I'm so Goodie baskets. Um, <laughs> they're gonna be looking and, and zooming I mean, in. They're my best friends. I, it's just. I ain't know, talking about them. I'm talking about the creepers. Here, but if you ca if they came over here, that's this is what you get. <laughs> you get what you get and don't throw a fit. One of my friends on here told me that forever ago. Their grandson said that, and it has stuck with me. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So we're getting fancy over here. This is with this little um, do hanger. What is it? Oh. One of my kids is hollering, we're getting fancy with this little rubber handled one. Where did we get this, Shane Lowe's? Handy paint pail. Yeah. All right, so we're going in to do the grout. You don't want to use one of these. This is all I have right now. You do not want to use one of these. You want to use an angle one, a small angle one. I thought this was all I had. This is not all I had. Shane found me a smaller one. Still, ideally, you'd want it to be angled because it'll get in the grooves better. But you can control a smaller one way better than you can control a bigger one. This, I would only attempt this size in the grout if I was a professional. And even given all of the brick I've done in my house, I am still not considered a professional. Even I uh, don't, I don't do this. I don't, I don't use this kind unless I actually have to. We're going to use a smaller one. Like I said, ideally you would want it angled. But it's okay if it's not, as long as it's just, you know, you can get it into the grooves. It doesn't, you don't have to go into the grooves and be very particular, meticulous or anything. I'll show you guys up close and personal how I do it. It can go over the brick because you want it to look very whitewashed. So it can go over the brick and it gives the brick some dimension and it fades it out a little bit into the grout. It looks really good that way. So you really can't do this wrong. The only way you would mess this up is, is if you went way overboard and really, really whitewashed it and you didn't want whitewash. To start little go big start with just the grouts and then when you come back look at it and say okay I want it faded in here okay I, look, I want it to look like it's been German smeared here or oh I want it to fade right there I want to fade this corner in I want to give it more white right there 
start little, go big. Never start big, because then you can't go little. Once you go fat, you don't go back. <laughs> We're going to go just, we're not going to be very particular, but we're also not going to be sloppy. We're just going to go through the grout with this little sucker right here with regular white paint, white wall paint. I'll show you up close. I don't, even, I don't need this right now, but I, I, I don't know why she handed me that. Okay, I'll show you up close. So we've got this area right here. You can see this right here is just drywall. It's not paint or anything. You can see the texture of my brick. My brick, that's textured. It's not just painted on there. If you didn't want to do something more permanent, you could just do the painting method where you just tape it off and use paint and not doing compound. I personally think that this looks way better. I, I think if you're going to go the other route, you should just use wallpaper at that point. But if you wanted to do it this way, you can skip out on the joint compound and it'll just look like paint and it won't be textured and it won't feel like real brick. This running your hand up and down, it feels like real brick. We got a generous amount on the brush. And we're going to go, see what I said about you can be, you don't have to be perfect. We're going to go in the grout lines. And you going over the brick a little bit is what's going to really fade that in. You're going to fade the brick. So I'm going to do a big old patch here. Then we'll come back and I'll show you how I whitewash the bricks. So I got this area right here done. Now I like a lot of the brown to show through because I, I like the dimension. I don't like really, really whitewashed brick. So I'm going to step back and I'm going to think about where I want, how much paint I want on the wall and where I'm going to place that paint on the wall to make it look a little bit whitewashed, just a smidge. Because if I'm being honest, I have to kind of match this, but this is almost too whitewashed for me. I like dimension. If I had, if this wasn't whitewashed, I could go over the brick with more paint. But I don't want to do that, uh, like with the, with the territorial beige. But if this wasn't as whitewashed as it is, I wouldn't go that dark. I'd probably leave it almost like this and not put any white on it at all. But to make it blend in with this, I'm going to have to whitewash it just a little bit more than I want to. So I'm going to stand back and see where exactly I can put the white that will make it blend. And you just get creative with it. You do this, you lightly feather it. And in some areas, you just paint on like that right there, the corner. Just to add some blending. Like I said, I don't want to darken it up too much. But in some areas like this right here, I'll just add more paint on the sides there. Just to paint a happy little brick. Just paint a happy little brick. wait until this is completely dry before you coat it with polyacrylic and I would suggest the semi-gloss or the satin polyacrylic because it makes it so much easier to clean. This is a shelf, it's a floating shelf, just like the ones that we did in part one of the Living Room Makeover series, uh, just shorter and smaller kind of. I didn't want the shelves to like be huge in this fireplace insert. I didn't want the shelves to take away from the brick in this fireplace insert. So I opted to go for shadow box looking floating shelves. These are easy as pie to make. I couldn't make them, but they're easy for Shane. <laughs> Shane has a lot of uh, experience making these now. But these are really easy to make and they're really easy to hang too versus 
other kind of shelving. These are like a staple in my house now. I'm going to stain these, my Jacobian stain that's throughout my house. I do not like mixing wood tones. I have a lot of contrast in my house, a lot of grayish, black, white, and Jacobian, and that is it, and I like it that way. It looks very conformed, and it looks just put together, and I like it that way, so I'm gonna stain these, the Jacobian, and then we're gonna hang these in there. They're not gonna come out as far as the wall, so they're kinda gonna be recessed, a lot recessed actually, and that's the look that I'm going for. I didn't want them to come out and meet the wall, because I wanted you to really focus on the wall and the arches rather than just rather than putting all your focus on the shelves. Shelves are just an add-on bonus. I really didn't even need shelves. It's not like I'm gonna store books in here or anything like that. And I don't like making shelf area anymore just to put decor on. Uh, that's just not what I'm going for these days. So on these, I'll probably put some pictures, a plant or two, but that's it. Like that's, there's really no reason to put shelves in there. I just wanted to put shelves in there because I really like how the wood looks against the brick. I'm gonna go back and add one more to each side of this. You guys get Moo Moo Marina today. <laughs> Yesterday they got No Goodies Basket Marina. Today you get No Goodies Basket and Moo Moo Marina today. We're still working on this. So what we're doing right now is the last thing we have to do on this wall. And it's trimming around the entrance area of the arch. The reason we're doing this is I was going to leave it plain. And I was going to leave it just to look like kind of stonework but right here you can see I can fit my finger in this seam see that right there I can literally fit like my Shane whole painting. Shane used all the sheetrock like I was using every piece of sheetrock I had <laughs> and unfortunately I didn't have any we water. Had, we had to piece it together so like this was supposed to be water but we were not going to go over budget to finish this so he literally pieced sheetrock together. Well, obviously we have to go over with some putty. It's just trimmed out which makes it look way cleaner in my opinion. It still sort of looks like, I just want to push my glasses up, it still sort of looks like stonework but it's cleaned out and I, I like that a lot. We'll have to caulk around the edges and then fill in the nail holes and that's all we have left to do on that wall. We trimmed it out with some corner trim. It was made to go on corners, but we heated it up with a hair dryer. <laughs> we got all scientific. We heated it up with a hair dryer and we used the plastic kind so that it would, you know, kind of fold under heat. And after a while under the hair dryer, it's bendable. It's still hard to bend and you got to be careful not to snap it. But if you go slowly and it's actually heated up to like the right temperature, it will bend. And so Shane cut the tip of it at an angle so that the arch would come together. And he just bent it around the arch itself, the edge of the arch itself. And because it's supposed to go on corners, it folded over each side of it and laid seamlessly. It did have to be nailed down a crap ton though. <laughs> so there was a lot of holes that we had to fill in that trim alone but it ended up so good this is the before it was kind of plain jane and this is what we're left with i'm going to add one more shelf to the bottom of each side of these and then do something with the cords down there on the bottom but other than that it's completely done it's caulked around it's trimmed out it's gorgeous thank y'all for hanging out with me i hope y'all have a blessed morning even not whatever it is wherever you're at and that i love you but jesus loves you more i'll see y'all later alligator